the third petal of life. The theme of this conclave has been unfurling the petals of life. We first saw the petal of childhood, then the petal of adulthood, and now the petal of elderhood. So this is what we will be looking at. And for this, once again, we are very lucky to have two special participants. We have uh, Neela ji from India, who will represent uh, the team or the people or uh, the diaspora from India. And we have Archana from USA, who will represent uh, the diaspora from USA. And what are the options? What are the activities? What are their hopes? What are their thoughts? What are their problems? So they will express about that. And then uh, after both of them do, uh, share their viewpoints, then I will speak a little bit about this and the scope of yoga in this. And then we'll have a short panel discussion. To begin, let us start with Shanti part. Please sit in a comfortable posture with your hands on your knees, head, neck, Shoulders back, all in a straight line. Eyes and mouth gently closed. Become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes. Awareness of your head, neck, shoulders, arms, chest, upper back, abdomen, lower back, hips, legs, the whole body. Shift your awareness to your breath. Normal spontaneous breathing coupled with awareness. Shift your awareness to your eyebrow center, Brumadhyaya. And at the Brumadhyaya, visualize the form of a brightly burning Jyoti, a candle flame. And maintaining your awareness on this, we shall chant the mantra Om three times together, followed by the Shanti mantras. Taking in a deep breath. Oh. 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 Together. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bunaktu Sahavir Yankar Vavahai Tejasvina Vadita Mastu Ma Vedvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Hi Hari Hi Om Hari Om Tatsat Gently rub your palms against each other. Place them on the closed eyes. Experience the warmth radiating from your palms to your eyes to the brain, to the whole body. And then, gently move the palms away. Open your eyes. Hari Om, Sat, Namo Narayan, Jai. So, to begin, let us invite Neela ji to share her views and her uh, uh, ex uh, express her thoughts 
on the situations hopes thoughts and concerns of the elders neela ji over to you you are muted हरे ओम नमो नारायण मैं हिंदी में बात करूंगी जी. मैं नीला तामणी मेरी उम्र है सेवेंटी इयर्स मैंने कंप्लीट कर किए है और सत्तर साल की उम्र और मैंने पहले सर जॉब किया है महाराष्ट्र स्टेट फाइनेंशियल कॉर्पोरेशन करके गवर्नमेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में ट्वेंटी सेवन इयर्स में वहां काम करने के बाद वी आर लेके फिर योग के फील्ड में मुझे जानकारी मिली और मैं योगा टीचर हूँ लास्ट ट्वेंटी टू ईयर्स में योगा टीचर का काम कर रही हूँ यहाँ थाना में हूँ और तो मेरे उम्र के जो लोग होते हैं इनकी समस्याओं लोगों के साथ बात करने से बहुत योगा टीचर होने के कारण भी मालूम हो जाती है तो मेरी जो समस्या है वो उसमें से एक दो समस्या में अभी आपको बताना चाहती हूँ ये टॉपिक के अनुसार तो इसमें मुझे अभी मालूम नहीं है मेरी उम्र की वजह से है या कोविड की वजह से है मगर जो घर बैठने की आदत हो गई है वो आदत में मैंने मेरा कॉन्फिडेंस गवा दिया है ये मुझे पूरी तरह से जानकारी मिलती है मैं बाहर जाने का सोचती हूँ डिसाइड करती हूँ मगर अन मौके पर कुछ ऐसा हो जाता है कि मैं बाहर नहीं जा सकती बहुत बार ऐसा हो जाता है पहले तो मैं बहुत घूमती थी अकेले जाती थी योगा के कारण ही मुझे बंगलोर जाना पड़ता था इधर बाकी के सिटीज में जाना पड़ता था वहां जाके मैं मेरा योगा का काम करती थी इंडिपेंडेंटली करती थी जब भी मैं सर्विस करती थी तभी ही मैं अलग अलग बैंकों में वगैरह सब जाके मैं पूरी तरह से काम करती थी मगर अभी मुझे मालूम नहीं है कि मुझे क्या हो गया है मैं तैयार भी होती हूँ मगर मैं बाहर जा नहीं सकती हूँ अभी यहाँ हमारे इसमें सुवर्णा जी भी है मैंने बहुत बार सोचा है कि अभी उनको जाके मिलू मगर मैं मेरे से नहीं होता है क्यों हो, नहीं होता है मालूम नहीं मेरा आत्मविश्वास कम पड़ जाता है बहुत बार मेरा ऐसा हो जाता है तो इसके लिए मैं क्या करूं मैं प्रयत्न कर रही हूँ मगर स्वामी जी से मैं पूछूंगी चाहूंगी कि वो कुछ मार्गदर्शन इस बारे में कर सकते हैं तो मुझे बहुत ही अच्छा रहेगा बहुत सदन रहे उदाहरण है मैं बाहर बार एटीएम में जाना पसंद नहीं करती कुछ काम करना बाहर जाके मैं पसंद नहीं करती घर में मैं बहुत कंफर्टेबल हूँ यहाँ से बहुत सारा काम करती हूँ कंप्यूटर का भी मैंने ये जो अलग जूम का और दूसरे सब को जो है तो वो मैंने सीख लिया है उस पर ऊपर भी अच्छी तरह से मुझे काम करना आता है मगर बाहर जाना मुझसे नहीं होता है मैं बहुत हेल्दी हूँ मगर नहीं होता है मालूम नहीं दूसरा मेरा प्रॉब्लम है मेरी मेमोरी बहुत स्ट्रांग है बहुत अच्छी है मगर अभी एक दो तीन महीने में मैंने महसूस किया है कि मैं कुछ तो भी ऐसा दिन में एक दो बार तो भूल जाती हूँ कितना भी इम्पोर्टेंट हो मैं भूलने लगी हूँ ऐसा मुझे लग रहा है मगर मैं ऐसे भूलने वालों में से नहीं हूँ मुझे मगर मैं टोटली कंप्लीटली मैं मेरा या या दो तीन महीने में ऐसा हुआ है कि मैं कुछ तो भी चीजें कितनी भी इम्पोर्टेंट हूँ मैं समझो हस्बैंड को मैसेज देना है किसी का फोन आया था तो मैं कभी कभी भूल जाती हूँ फ्रिज के पास जाती हूँ तो मुझे लगता है अरे मैं क्या निकालने के लिए यहाँ आ गई मुझे मालूम नहीं किसी को फोन करना है ध्यान में रखती हूँ तो अभी मैंने मेरी तरफ से ये शुरू किया क्योंकि मुझे ना डर होने लगा है ऐसा क्या ऐसे ही डिमेंशिया होता है क्या ये शुरुआत है क्या मैं ऐसे ही भूलते जाऊंगी क्या मगर मैंने मेरी तरफ से उसके ऊपर थोड़ा सॉल्यूशन निकाला है कि मैं नोट डाउन करती हूँ फिर और फिर वो पढ़ लेती हूँ देख लेती हूँ तो मेरे दिमाग में फिर से आ जाता है मगर मैं जो काम करती हूँ अभी कंप्यूटर पे करती हूँ या घर में करती हूँ या दूसरा कुछ जो करती हूँ उसमें ब्रेन में तो चलते ही रहता है मेरे कैलकुलेशन चलती रहती है सब है फिर भी ये दो तीन महीने में मुझे मालूम नहीं की क्या हुआ है मेरी मेमोरी जरा थोड़ी भूलने की मुझे तो ये लग रही है और मेरा ट्राई है कि ये आगे ना बढ़े तो ऐसा मैं सोचती हूँ अभी ये मैंने मेरी दो समस्याएं बताई इसके अलावा भी बहुत सारे लोगों से के पास से फीडबैक मिलता है कोई बातें करते हैं तभी बताते हैं कि उनको यानी फिजिकल लेवल पे भी ये एज के लोगों का किसी को डायबिटीज होता है 
किसी को हाइपर टेंशन का ये है किसी को कम सुनने को आता है वो पूछते हैं इसके कान क्लास में भी पूछते हैं कि सुनने को कम आता है कुछ ऐसा बाकी सब बता रहे हो मगर ये नहीं क्या कान के लिए कुछ नहीं है क्या योगा में तो इंस्टेंटली जवाब भी देते हैं हम उनको बताते हैं मगर ये फिजिकल लेवल का भी डिस्कस करेंगे तो बहुत टाइम उसमें जाएगा मगर ये जो दो समस्या मैंने बताई है ये सिर्फ मेरी नहीं है मेरी जिनसे इंटरेक्शन हो रही है वो सभी लोग ज्यादा करके मेरे लेडीज के साथ हुई है मगर जेंट्स के साथ भी मैंने देखा है कि उनको भूल जाने की आदत मेरे से भी ज्यादा है मेरी तो अब भी शुरुआत है ऐसा लग रहा है मैं एक दो ही ऐसी चीजें भूलती हूँ दिन में मगर उनकी समस्या तो बहुत ही है अभी सुना है वो भी भूलते हैं कोई कोई लोगों को पीछे का याद आता है पहले जब इसका सब याद आता है अभी का याद नहीं आता कोई लोगों को अभी का याद आता है पहले का नहीं याद आता है ऐसे भी बहुत सारी वो लोगों की समस्या है ये शायद उम्र की वजह से ही होती होगी तो इन लोगों को सहायता कैसे करें इन लोगों की मदद कैसे करें क्योंकि एक हम हम लोगों की इंटरेक्शन योगा टीचर करके बहुत लोगों के साथ होती है वो पर्सनल भी फोन कर लेते हैं क्लास के बाद भी और बाहर जाए तो भी लोग हमें पूछते हैं तो इनका समस्या का हल अभी उम्र की यानी जो रेंज है वो बढ़ गई है लाइफ स्पेन बढ़ गया है तो ये लोगों को कैसे हम समझाएं और खुद के लिए भी क्या करें ये मैं तो स्वामी जी को बताऊंगी कि तो प्लीज इसके बारे में कुछ गाइडेंस दे तो अच्छा रहेगा निश्चित स्वामी बहुत अच्छी बात कही आपने आत्मविश्वास खो जाना और विस्मृति होना और फिर बाकी जो आरोग्य के समस्याएं होते हैं वो तो है ही तो अः इन पर हम विस्तार में बाद में बात करेंगे पहले हम अर्चना जी से आग्रह करेंगे कि वो भी अपने तरफ से कुछ प्रस्तुत करें और इसमें ठीक है तब हम एक बार ये हो जाता है तब फिर हम बात करें अर्चना जी नमो नारायण एवरीबडी या माय नेम इज अर्चना डोंगरे एंड आई लिव नियर लॉस एंजलिस इन कैलिफोर्निया व्हाट आई एम गोइंग टू से इज समथिंग गुड बी अबाउट मी बट लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स आई ऑब्जर्व अराउंड मी एंड फ्रॉम माय फ्रेंड्स व्हाट आई हियर व्हाट आई सी अबाउट द कंडीशन ऑफ द अबाउट द प्रॉब्लम्स दैट द एल्डरली फेस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एज सीनियर सिटीजन्स lot of things have been made available to us there are uh, like every city has a special senior center um where uh, seniors can go and have a there are works is everything okay can everybody hear me properly yes 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 okay. we can okay okay so there are senior centers in every city which are very beautiful senior centers they are meant only for seniors they are adequately staffed <clears throat> and then there are workshops and seminars uh, going on all the time and different uh, information about uh, different things about health aspects financial aspects everything and one can just go there and spend a very nice time and you are treated like a client they call you as a client and the staff over there is very helpful so that's one thing then there are senior there are special things available for senior in many many ways also when we indians live in the west here we are influenced kind of by observing how americans live the americans who are 60 plus years old 70 plus years old or 80 plus years old their way of life is so um jolly they try to find joy in everything they live independently but at the same time uh they think young they never say oh what can i do i am already 60 or i am already 70 everything is gone now they don't think like that they think how best i can enjoy myself today they go out they meet with friends and they try to live life at the, attend different clubs get involved in uh, social activities volunteer work uh, the clubs of uh, their hobbies and uh, we are influenced by their way of thinking also i think young no matter how you are how old you are age is only a number so um think young do the best you can every day so 
wherever that is the way to be. So myself and my friends who live alone, I live alone by the way, my husband passed away a few years ago. So we have made a motto like, we are not only going to survive, but thrive. Not just survive, but thrive. Follow yeah. your hobbies, expand your reading, expand your exposure to different thoughts, different ideas, uh, knowledge, etc. So we try to live by that motto. Now, um, also I would like to mention about a city that is only for retired people. It's called Laguna Woods. That's, I don't live in that city, but that is nearby here. And um, in that city, everybody is 55 years and older. Even there are people there who are, who are 100 plus. I go there often because I have friends there and I observe their life. They have a lot of facilities available to them. The houses are cheaper there. Then there's tremendously good security. And um, there, are, there are maybe 100 clubs like who are for, and, and those clubs are for uh, people who are like, like photography, travel, uh, different kinds of arts, painting, watercolor, acrylic color, sewing, knitting, crocheting, you name it, for every hobby there's a club. So people can go cluster around, practice their own hobby and learn from each other, learn from a teacher also. But with all that, all the outside facilities, are the people really happy? And when I think about that, I notice different things from what, the, what I observe, what people tell us, what my friends go through, and it is not a very rosy picture. The picture is, although living independently with everything at their, you know, for, for their convenience also, there's tremendous amount of loneliness. There's a breakup of family that I see in many places. Some people are very happy. They have great relationship with their younger generation. And that's perfectly fine. And that's the way it should be. But like, I give you an example of a friend of mine. He had a knee surgery some time ago, a couple of years ago. And he has three children, two boys and a girl. And uh, one of the boys is a doctor also. They did not come. The, the two boys, they live in different states. But they did not come even for the father's knee surgery. And the father was 86 years old at that time. Only the daughter came. She came for three, four days. And then she, after four days, she said, okay, they'll take, your friends will take care of you. And the daughter left to go to her house. And literally, friends helped him. I used to go visit him at his hospital and the rehabilitation, rehabilitation center for two weeks. I used to visit him every day. There were some other friends who used to come too. Then he came home. I was there to help him when he came home from the, from the rehab center. There were another couple of friends there too. So kind of, we were the only people there to help him, even though he had a family. Why? Why they did not think that it was their responsibility to be with their father? Another friend of mine, and these are Indians, okay? These are all Indians who are around. I'm not talking about Americans here. Another lady, she had breast cancer. All of a sudden, she discovered that she had a breast cancer, among many other problems, and she had to go through surgery. The day she went to surgery, her son, who lives about 50 miles away, could not come. Friends took her to the surgery. The friends brought her home from the hospital because of the COVID at that time, about a year ago. They were, they were not let you, letting you live in the hospital. The patients were sent home the exact, the very same day after surgery. So she was brought home by friends. Then friends came in and they tried to put some free food in her fridge, make sure that she has, she has food there for a couple of days and all that. So it was all because of friends. Where is the family? And I see that a lot. Another friend of mine, her three children live nearby. 
within about say 20 miles radius. But they are not always there. And these are the children which were, which were brought up very nicely, well educated, highly educated at the cost of their parents. So something is wrong somewhere. I see here that there is a tremendous inf uh, idea of inflated ego, an inflated sense of personal space, personal independence, and a self-centeredness. And I don't know what is the solution for that. Then I was just talking to Swamiji about one thing. From, a, from my medical insurance, which is SCAN, they have a facility that uh, if people are lonely, they will give you a call. Someone will call you from the insurance who is a designated caller. They will call you for 20 minutes a week, like on a certain day at a certain time. So my friend said, okay, you know, let me make use of that uh, facility. So they used to call her like every Thursday at two o'clock. They will call you once if you are, if you have stepped outside or if you're going to reach the phone at that time, they'll call you again at, after five minutes just to see if you are there. They're only supposed to call twice. If, if they call twice and you are not there, they forget about it. They won't wonder why, what happened to her. Is she sick? Has she fallen down? Does she need something? Is she in medical need? They won't think like that. When their job is done, it's done. So it's kind of mechanical. The services are there, but they're kind of mechanical. They, they don't... Um, and also, I see a lot of apathy around. There's tremendous apathy. Even friends helping people, there are, there are friends who will help. There are friends who will say, no, 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 I don't have time. Absolutely, I don't have time. I have something else to do. There's apathy also. So that is a picture I see all around me. So I see there is a problem of, despite everything, there's a problem of loneliness. There's a problem of depression. People feel hurt when the family members don't, don't act, uh, you know, when they are not there. People feel very hurt. So that is there. So these are the problems I see all around me. And of course, I'm not different from anybody else. What everybody else go through, I go through too. I go through the same too. Anything else you would like me to comment, Swamiji? Uh, both of you have uh, very eloquently spoken about the problems. You have also spoken about uh, the facilities. But can both of you uh, speak for a few minutes about the hopes, the desires, what you would like to do or what comes to your mind, what interests you now that, uh, you know, you are uh, aging and uh, what are things which uh, interest you? Or Neela ji, aap bhi agar Archana ji ke baad mein दो मिनट में थोड़ा सा व्यक्त करेंगे कि आपकी क्या अभिलाषा होती है क्या विचार होते हैं क्या सोच होती है क्या करने का मन करता है उसके बारे में थोड़ा सा क्योंकि जो प्रॉब्लम है उसके विषय में तो हम लोगों ने बात की लेकिन क्या सब चीज नकारात्मक ही है या कुछ सकारात्मक नहीं है तो अगर कुछ सकारात्मक है तो इसके विषय में थोड़ा सा बात कीजिए अर्चना जी Uh, okay, so, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. What I would like, when you say something is not there, that means the secret hope is, I wish it would be there. So, naturally, I wish that there will not, will not be so much apathy. And uh, when people relate to each other, they should relate on a more on a more congenial level. You mean like I happen to be humane, I'm sorry? 
ह्यूमेन लेवल एच यू एम एन ई ह्यूमेन या ह्यूमेन ह्यूमेन लेवल या ऑल्सो कंजीनियल लेवल ह्यूमेन लेवल i would like more like um, meaningfulness a better connections everything mm-hmm. everything and everybody seems to be disconnected as long as their own selfish desire is fulfilled the connection is not there anymore or i will do only within this little, little sphere so i would like to see more more connectivity mm-hmm. more humanity more empathy not apathy not sympathy nobody wants sympathy you want empathy empathy i empathize with others when my my when my friend was was sick i empathize with him the other lady uh, who was uh, uh, who had a breast cancer and all that and she was um, i empathize with her empathy is needed and not sympathy not sympathy that is true thank you thank you arshana ji very much nice of you to share your thoughts neela ji can i request you ki yes kya uh, aapki umar mein kya karna chahte hain ya kya man mein vichar aata hai jahan par man apne se ja jata hai uske vishay mein swami ji inhone jaise bataya itna negativity to yahan pe nahi hai mere umar ke ya usse bade log bhi ghar mein hain तो बच्चे अभी भी उनका ख्याल रखते हैं वो बिजी है फिर भी यहाँ जो ब्यूरोज है वहां से कुछ तो मेड मिल जाती है उनकी देखभाल करने के लिए बच्चे आठ आठ दिन नहीं आ पाएंगे फिर भी वो फोन करते हैं बात करते हैं उसी प्रकार मेरे जैसे फ्रेंड्स जो होते हैं या जो रिलेटिव्स होते हैं तो हम लोग समझो जा नहीं पा रहे हैं हमारे उम्र की वजह से या दूसरे कोई कारण की वजह से लंबा है करके मगर एक इतना मैंने जरूर मैं करना चाहूंगी कि हम लोग एक दूसरे को जो फोन करते हैं एक दूसरे के पूछताछ करते हैं और उसमें से बातें होती है दूसरों के बारे में हम लोग एक फ्रेंड सर्कल में या रिलेटिव में एक दूसरे को बताते हैं कि अभी ऐसा करना तुम आपका व्यू ऐसा होना चाहिए ये मैं उनको यानी एक्सेप्टेंस उनका बढ़ाना उनको उनकी जो बीमारी है उनकी समस्या है उसके बारे में कुछ नहीं कर पा रहे हैं तो एक्सेप्टेंस बढ़ाना उनको कॉन्फिडेंस देना ये निश्चित रूप से हो सकता है और वैसे हम करते भी हैं और वो और बढ़ना चाहिए एक दूसरे को कॉन्फिडेंस देने का और एज ए योगा टीचर मैं ये भी कहूंगी कि क्लास में आते हैं हमारा थेरेपी का सेंटर भी चलता था अभी कोविड की वजह से बंद अभी शुरू नहीं हुआ है मगर वहां के लोग भी आते हैं तो डिफरेंट डिफरेंट टीचर्स को मिलते हैं तभी हम लोग उनके साथ अच्छी तरह से काउंसलिंग भी करते हैं उनका वो काउंसलिंग भी अभी बढ़ना चाहिए इन पर्सन जो काउंसिलिंग है ये ऑनलाइन से भी वो ज्यादा इफेक्टिव रहता है और हमें गाइडेंस भी मिलता है हमारे सीनियर से हमारे यहाँ के डॉक्टर से मिलता है तो वो गाइडेंस लेके हम लोगों ने उनका काउंसलिंग बढ़ाना चाहिए और उनके साथ मिलजुल के जितना हो सके उतना करना चाहिए उनको थोड़ा बूस्टअप करके उन वो जो नर्वस हो जाते हैं उस टाइम वो फोन कर लेते हैं तभी थोड़ा टाइम निकाल के उनके साथ बात करनी चाहिए और जो हमें मालूम है उसका उपयोग क्योंकि ये सिर्फ इतना ही लिमिटेड नहीं है कि ये आसन है प्राणायाम है इतना ही लिमिटेड नहीं है तो इसके आगे चल के भी मन की फैकल्टी हम हम लोगों ने सीखी है मन क्या है ये सीखा है ग्रंथों में से तो वो मन वो अपने आप अप हमारे में अभी इनकलकेट हो चुका है तो वो सब लोगों के लिए उसका उपयोग हो सके तो बहुत अच्छा रहेगा ऐसे मुझे लगता है धन्यवाद धन्यवाद थैंक यू नीला जी थैंक यू यस अर्चना यू वांट टू से समथिंग या आर यू आर यू डन नीला जी आर यू डन या या यस मैम यस या सो स्वामी जी आस्क मी व्हाट आई वुड लाइक टू डू समटाइम्स आई एम अ लिटिल बिट लकी इन टर्म्स ऑफ हैंडलिंग लोनलीनेस आल्सो बिकॉज़ आई आई लुक अप टू स्क्रिप्चर्स आई लव i listen to some of the expert talks on uh, on our scriptures on geeta on gnaneshwari dasbodh that is my liking and i also read quite a bit so that is a great company for me so 
and i would like to do some more meaningful work there more productive work about my whatever knowledge god has given me whatever interest i have i would like to make it more productive some kind of productive use from that maybe write a book or uh, do some recordings you know so, uh, some YouTube. excellent uh, videos on youtube so that is my aspiration to make more better use of that because i have to have a goal without a goal i will not be anywhere beautiful of course better my health uh, uh, bettering uh, making my health better making more productive use of something and um, just things are as they are so um just uh, find out the find out the good things from that and make use of that so that is that would be what i would like to do beautiful beautiful thank you so much thank you both of you for sharing your uh, wisdom and we all feel very touched very privileged that you have shared these thoughts with us and let us see how we can understand this stage of life better the first petal of life is childhood and childhood by nature is more energetic bountiful full of enthusiasm full of hope then comes the second petal the petal of adulthood and here there is a lot of desires and thoughts and actions and everything and there is a tremendous amount of satisfaction for some some disappointments some frustrations but there is lot of uh, zest and goal and then comes the senior age the elder age the older age and this is a very important phase of our life everybody has to undergo this phase death is certain birth is not certain but once we have taken birth death is certain and so there is a tremendous amount of unrest uneasiness as people approach this and as we have seen in both situations there are solutions there are problems but one thing which yoga likes to say is we must remember that this is this can be let me put it that way the golden age of our life this is the time in our life we have accumulated lot of wisdom we have so many experiences with us this is the time that we can sit down pause introspect spend time with others but sometimes it doesn't happen so there are difficulties difficulties they come at multiple dimensions one thing which i have heard amongst many people and also when we were discussing now is purpose about goals we in india in the indian philosophy speak about the brahmacharya ashram for children the grihastha ashram for adults and the vanaprastha ashram for senior citizen and then vanaprastha moves into sanyasa ashram what is the basic philosophy behind this we need to understand 
we have heard many times that there is something known as an atma within us and this atma is the indweller and this atma carries its journey beyond this and all of us have heard it all of us might even believe it but it somehow stays only in theory it does not trickle down into our practical experiences and many times i have seen after either you retire yourself or the government retires you because there is a rule that after a certain age you cannot work and then people are left with nothing to do no goal in life no aim in life and when this begins it saps the energy of a person it creates lot of a uh, drag on the life force that is a very negative trend and that is the first thing that we have to clear out i'm not going to speak about the practices we will discuss that in the panel discussion but i will speak about concepts <coughs> the aim in brahmacharya ashram is to learn new skills and empower ourselves the aim goal in grupt ashram is to set a structure become a contributing member of the society or feed a contribute tumhara kaam hai live life as per your thoughts and desires work hard for them and enjoy when we come to vanaprast then there is no goal so we try to borrow the goal from grihastha ashram and i to live an extended grihastha ashram life but that doesn't work and we feel restless our body these ashrams are created as per the physiological basis of the body and completely that way so what is the goal in vanaprastha ashram the goal in vanaprastha ashram has to be to move out from the small definition of i me myself and mine the community and move into something larger i do not deny i do not deny that people should like archana ji said think young that is extremely positive and good we must do that we don't see much of that in india so for the indian counterparts this is a very good learning lesson but thinking young is not enough we need to have a goal and what is that goal the goal one of them i have mentioned is reaching out but there is another goal which i would like to focus upon the soul which comes into this body this soul it is here for a purpose we need to learn few things we need to work out few karmas and that is an important thing why because if we do not learn that part of our curriculum of this class then in the next class 
we have to go back and learn these things all over again. Like in engineering, we have a system called allowed to keep terms. I don't know if that still uh, exists now, but earlier when we were students, it used to be there and they used to know, call it as ATKT. So you can move into the next class, but you have to work and clear your previous class. So if we don't clear our curriculum this time, then in the next life, we have to do this ATKT business. And that is extra work. So therefore, one another goal in Vanaprast has to be to start becoming aware of this concept and start observing what is it that I need to do? What is it that I am required to do? What are my karmas? and start pondering about it and work about it. Just saying that, oh, ab to jindagi nikal gai, abhi kya karna hai, is not good enough. Oh, I can't really earn money due to that, is not good enough. I am doing it for my own good. I am doing it so that I can evolve further. Because evolution is the aim of life. A bacteria evolves into something more, some into insects, into reptiles, into birds, into mammals. That is how evolution takes place. And now the evolution in human beings has to be on the level of the consciousness. This is what we need to know. So this is important. The concept of Brahman, the Atma, and slowly to make it more real. That is important. And when that comes in, then all the experiences are useful because through every experience, we can work it out. When we do this, then we are moving upwards on that longer evolutionary cycle and as well as on this evolutionary cycle. We say that I am not able to do certain things. What do I do? The reason is I don't feel motivated enough for that. What my motivation earlier was that I need to get good marks so that everybody will applaud me. That's not the case anymore. I need to uh, do all these things so that my family will appreciate me. That's not the case anymore. This is the time when we have to start introspecting and work on this. The Motivation has to come from within. I am at this level today. Tomorrow, I am at one level further. Not only in the external, but also in the internal. When that is the goal, then every moment counts. Every moment is important. And then things become clearer. When we speak about yoga, what can we do to bring this in? And what can we do to achieve this? Then we also need to know that as Neelaji said, yoga is much more than asana and pranayam. Yoga is more than meditation too. Yoga is a way of life. And this way of life needs to be lived. One of the most important concepts is about reaching out. And when we reach out to others, there is somebody higher which reaches into us and makes our path easier. 
to be able to experience that that energy makes a lot of shift many things which are almost impossible start becoming possible this is very important the other thing is bhakti this is a time when there is lot of emotions coming in loneliness is also a form of an emotion feeling sadness feeling remembering people these are all emotions and these emotions cannot be just suppressed suppressing emotions creates problems what is necessary is we need to direct these emotions in the sufi way of thinking there are two types of ishq ishq means love everybody knows there is ishq mazazi the ishq which is towards the sense objects to the external world and there is something known as the ishq hakiki the ishq towards that one factor which is the hakikat there is nothing beyond that and that is the supreme self when we start channelizing these thoughts towards them there is a shift which takes place the emotions get transformed and bhakti is born bhakti is not merely going into the temple and ringing the bell or doing puja aarti that is a tool by which bhakti can be developed bhakti is a way of thinking how do i behave when i am in love with somebody my behavior is totally different when i am out of love so to say my behavior is different in the same way when that love for the divine comes naturally within everything starts changing we might have multiple health issues we might have so many things one very useful tool is the development of bhakti and bhakti is the culmination of yoga and one of the beginnings of bhakti is seva so when we are capable we should try and do seva of others in a selfless manner that makes an impact within us this is not charity charity is a different story this is seva for my benefit like archana ji said we have to have empathy not sympathy and also not apathy this softness in relations is lost today in the clang of the material life how to bring it back bhakti offers the way out and we have to find ways and means to do that another important aspect is when we were discussing about the goals we what swami ji had said once that is something which i feel is very important in this stage of life swami ji had said in one satsang to one person he had said that look here after a certain age 60 65 or so we must start preparing for the journey ahead what was the journey he was speaking about when our body leaves 
uh, our soul leaves this body and moves ahead, then the soul begins the eternal journey. And we don't have to be afraid of it because it is going to happen to each and every one of us. The more we try to run away from the reality, the harder it becomes. But the more we try to understand it and mold according to it, it easier it becomes. And what is the preparation? Swamiji had said, if you are going to Antarctica, you will not take your Bermudas with you. You will not take your beach hat with you. You will not take your skating, you know, that roller uh, skates board with you or the surfing board with you. Rather, you will take the woolens and winters and if at all, you will take your skis with you. In the same way, when we are preparing for this journey ahead, what are the things which are important? When the soul leaves, the soul leaves with the samskaras from this life and the karmas. All of this goes into the seed form and is taken. And when the soul incarnates again, then these seeds, they start that journey all over again. Preparing for the journey ahead is sifting from this tray of seeds what is useful, what is not useful. If I have to live my life again, in whichever form, whichever way, then what are the things which are useful for me? Let me take that with me. What is it that will improve my path when I'm in this state of between two lives? That is the power of mantra, the pranic energy. That is what will help me at that point of time. So let me prepare myself with that. And those things which are of no use, let me get rid of them. Let me not carry them in the mind. This is very, very important. And for this, we have to, of course, practice some yoga, asan, pranayam. But we have to remember that when we practice asan or pranayam, we are not just working on the body level. We are working on the mind. And we are working on something much beyond. We are working on the subtle energy level, pranic level. And it is this which is very important. In yogic scriptures, there are certain practices which have been spoken of. They say that these practices can reduce aging and they can even reverse aging and avoid death. Of course, we are not in a situation that we have been able to master that. But we are able to know about it. And we can start practicing these practices. Luckily, most of these practices are simple. And we are able to do this at any point of time. These practices work on the inner aspect, the inner life which needs to be worked upon. And here we go about setting our energies in order. We should undertake some pranayam. We should undertake some meditative practices by which we can slowly clear out this unwanted garbage, bring in that which is essential and Try and practice bhakti. Reach out to others. Like how Aparna, uh, Archana ji said. When you reach out to others. That creates a circuit. And some higher energy 
reaches unto you. And we feel the presence of that energy in our life. That is important. And when we have that, there is a difference. And then we know that maybe I have made mistakes in life. Who has not? But I have started learning from them. I have started correcting them. I have not waited for nature to throw its gauntlet at me and force me to learn. I have started learning on my own. And that makes a lot of difference. And lastly, we need to gradually increase one aspect. And that aspect is Namasmaran. Recollection of the name of the Lord. And this is very essential and very important. If we want to have a good next life, then we need to have a proper handle which will take us in that direction. The thoughts, the words which we use in the last moments of our life help de uh, define our next life. That's why we need to start with Nama Sankirtan. And there is tremendous joy in Nama Sankirtan. Ah, you don't have to do it uh, in public and make a drama out of it. You can just sit quietly and do. You, if you are musically oriented, you can sing Kirtans. There are so many ways by which you can do Nama Sankirtan. But that is so beautiful. There is a saying Govind meri yeh prarthana hai ki bhulu na mai naam kabhi tumhara ye naam tere din raat gaau Govind damo darmaath vedi dehant kale tum saamane ho bansi bajate man ko lubhate gaate yahi naam tananath tyagu Govinda Damo Dharamathavet. That has to be the activity which we have to practice. And when we come towards that end stage of this life, then it is not intellect which works. At that time, the mind is in a different space. That which I have practiced my whole life is going to come out. If I am full of thoughts and desires and actions, that is all what is going to come out. And I will be pining for that. That won't help. Now is the time that we have to start practicing. And when we practice over and over and over, over a long period of time, start with 10 minutes a day, that's more than enough. Then there is a shift which takes place. And that repetition of the name creates a change in the brain, creates a change in the physiology, creates a change all over. And it also brings unexpected grace, amazing grace, which can change everything in a moment. When it will happen, to whom it will happen, that we can't say. But it's our duty to try and keep connected. When we do this, then even the ultimate test of life, we can pass in flying colors. If the final exam, you get good marks, it does not matter if you have not got good marks in your uh, mid-semester, if you have not got in the previous unit tests, it doesn't really make any difference. It is the final exam which counts. And this is the final exam in human beings. And the goal in Vanaprast is to ultimately move transition from one into that. To begin, we need to reach out to others. 
I have so much of experience. Let me help others with it. And while doing that, simultaneously, let me start connecting within. If I don't connect within, everything is lost. We need to practice asan, pranayam. We need to practice meditation. We need to practice and observe ourselves in detail. That all is there, but that is not sufficient. In addition to that, this is crucial. And when we are able to do that, then there is a shift. That is important amongst us. So with this, I would like to conclude my talk. And I would like to now throw open the place for discussion the panel discussion over the problems or questions more than problems questions swami ji ek vicharu haan ji ek puchna chahti hu yani thoda negative hai magar aapka jo abhi suna vanaprastha ashram ki taiyari ka wagaire uske wajah se mujhe puchna hai ki aapne ye jo taiyari boli hai kaha hai aapne abhi मगर लोगों के साथ बात करें ना ओल्ड एज के तो वो घबरा जाते हैं मृत्यु के बारे में सुन के यानी नजदीक के किसी की मृत्यु हो गई और वो भी हम उन्हें बता नहीं सकते हैं कई बार वो बहुत खुद का खुद की मृत्यु के बारे में और आगे जो फिलोसॉफी है वो सुनने के स्टेट में नहीं होते नहीं रहते इसलिए उनके साथ हम लोग ऐसा है ना कि इसका मतलब है कि उनकी तैयारी वहां तक है नहीं तो उनके लिए हम मतलब यही चीज हो गया ना कि हमको मटके में पानी रखना है लेकिन अगर मटके को हमने वो अग्नि का संस्कार नहीं कराया है उसको तैयार नहीं किया है तो मटके में पानी डालेंगे तो डह जाएगा अनेक लोगों को हम लोगों ने जीवन में इसके बारे में कुछ प्रारंभ ही नहीं किया है तो इसीलिए लोगों के साथ में जब हम लोगों को जिनको इसके विचार के बारे में है नहीं तो उनको सीधा ये विचार नहीं इससे शुरू कर सकते हैं उनको हम लोगों को बोलना है कि हमको शारीरिक मानसिक और भावनात्मक स्तरों पर अपने आप को तैयार करना होता है हमारे जीवन में जो हमने किया है जो बाकी है उसका लेखा जोखा तैयार करना है और हमारे अनुभवों से हमको लोगों को मदद करनी है और विश्लेषण करके हम लोगों को अपने आप सुदृढ़ बनाना है एक और चीज ऐसे लोगों को ये बोल सकते हैं कि जो हमारे ऋषि मुनि रहे हैं वो क्या करते हैं वो दूर गुफा में बैठे रहते हैं और अपने साधना के बल ऊर्जा को प्रक्षेपित करते हैं और उस ऊर्जा से दुनिया चलती है हम लोग अगर शारीरिक रूप से कुछ नहीं कर सकते हैं तो हम लोग मानसिक स्वरूप में आध्यात्मिक स्वरूप में निश्चित रूप से कर सकते हैं और उसका फल मिलता है इससे लोगों की तैयारी होना शुरू हो जाती है और जब थोड़ा सा आसन प्राणायाम करते हैं थोड़ा सा ध्यान का अभ्यास करते हैं और थोड़ा सा सत्संग होता है तब धीरे धीरे उनकी तैयारी हो जाती है और जब समय सही है उस समय ये विचार प्रस्तुत करना होता है समय के पहले विचार प्रस्तुत करने से बहुत मुश्किल तो इन लोगों को हमेशा शरीर और शारीरिक स्तर से शुरू करना चाहिए तब फिर धीरे धीरे आगे बढ़ा शारीरिक और भावनात्मक स्तर क्योंकि जैसे आपने बतलाया वो घबरा जाते हैं तो व्याकुलता होती है मन में तो उसको को योग निद्रा है प्राणायाम है थोड़े आसन है उससे इस व्याकुलता को हम एक दिशा दे सकते हैं और फिर धीरे धीरे छह महीना साल डेढ़ साल दो साल व्यक्ति के ऊपर रहता है 
धीरे से ये विचार धीरे 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 लाना पड़ता है Talking about the same topic about the death, understanding death and facing death, the way being in being exposed to the in the west helped me because when my husband's uh, death was imminent like we both knew that he is not going to live for more than maybe he live for 6 months one year we talked openly about death without getting afraid of it i asked him because i thought sooner or later he will lose his speech he won't be able to speak so i asked him what are his, what are his uh, wishes where would you like me to do your cremation where would you like me to do? and we without any bondage of emotion we discussed it freely i asked in the proper place of where would you like to go, uh, do the cremation where would you like to have the service which priest do you want i can get that priest for you and ultimately where would you like to immerse your ashes in the pacific ocean would you like me to go to haridwar to immerse your ashes and he left everything to me he said to me i know you will do the very best you can so i leave it entirely up to you so beautiful and then i planned i decided to give him a funeral as best as i could very solemn because in the in the west here we have to give up make an elaborate you know ritual of the funeral that's what our counterparts do so we do it that way too rent a hall have a beautiful service so i called i wanted a priest who had good pronunciation i see too many priests with not good pronunciations i come must have called at least 50 people to uh, you know to understand about their knowledge and about their pronunciation etc finally i got the best priest i could uh, i could hire i hired a beautiful place for his funeral very serene very beautiful scenic and all that that's where i did his funeral and about the ashes i took his ashes to narmada he had not putting he had not put any condition on me then i thought let me take his ashes to his birthplace and he was born in baroda uh, near narmada river so i i went there with his ashes to narmada river and i immersed his ashes in narmada near mm. his birthplace so, so i said let the life end where it began come to a full circle that's so nice that is so nice and on this count i would like to add one more thing in the journey of life we have made mistakes we have broken fences and we hold many things within us for too long it is very essential that we start mending the fences yes we might have left things late we might not have done but it is never too late to mend fences and uh, make our effort to forgive to heal that which has happened reach out and as people age they come to know about this more and more this i think is very essential and we need to keep this in mind because don't leave it till too late reach out and if that is not possible reach in and mentally clear those things out that makes a lot of your burden easier you had spoken about memory you had spoken about loss of confidence though not directly related to this our uh, hard disk gets full and when our hard disk gets full then the ability starts coming down 
we know that our computer slows down in the same way mm-hmm. too much of unnecessary material then this happens so we need to consciously start getting rid of unwanted material and clear the recycle bin so to say and when that happens then the energy comes in and works and we are able to do better second is loss of confidence a little bit of loss of confidence and awareness of loss of confidence is good for a simple reason that in this age we have to be more careful and we can't afford to have accidents because our body can't heal itself so fast anymore but when the conf- loss of confidence starts affecting our day to day activities then it is time to know that it that is going a step too far so what can we do for this first thing which is there is the process of visualization yes asan pranayam pranayam helps a lot in this but i am speaking of visualization close your eyes and visualize exact thing which you are afraid of what the fear is coming and then you become aware of that fear and then thoughts start coming up and then you become aware what is the reason of that fear you observe that and as you observe that over a period of time then you will see that solution start coming out initially fear paralyzes it stops the mind from thinking it stops everything it blocks everything and when that blocking takes place then there is a problem which comes and i don't want that thing to happen so i step back but when i visualize it i observe it and i see oh this is the stumbling block then i can mentally step back and okay if this is not possible what is possible is there something else is there when you start observing it then many things become clear many times it is something which we have heard something which we have seen something which we uh, observe that goes in and makes a very strong impact and then we are not able to so this visualization is a very simple practice but over a period of time that is very powerful and in addition to visualization you should use uh some other practices of uh higher yogic practices which can help bring that energy up and infuse that energy within you doing this we are able to increase our capabilities and gradually make this life a golden period of life golden does not just mean i am enjoying everything left right and center no golden means it shines hmm and you become a wise person you become an elder person in hindi or in sanskrit there is a term called vayovruddha tapovruddha gnana vruddha vayovruddha we all become but do we do tapovruddha do we do gnana vruddha and when tapovruddha starts coming in then you will see you start radiating energy you become peaceful you become you know there is a luster which comes in and there is a different energy around such a person that is what we have to try and become vayovruddha tapovruddha gnana vruddha not buddhi vruddha gnana <laughs> vruddha that has to be the aim and when we do that that is see. swami ji 
yes. तो एक बात पूछना है जी आ, आ, अभी अर्चना जी ने जब बोला था कि उधर के जो लोगों का बिहेवियर है वो इस तरह से होता है कि दे फील ऑल अलोन तो मेरे मन में ऐसा आया कि बच्चे लोग जब छोटे रहते हैं तो वो बहुत रिसेप्टिव रहते हैं वो अपने पेरेंट्स अपने आजू बाजू के लोग कैसे बिहेव करते हैं वो देखते हैं और उससे उनका मन उनका ये थॉट प्रोसेस सब हो जाता है तो यदि बच्चों के सामने उनके माँ बाप ने या उनके रिलेटिव्स ने ऐसा ही बिहेवियर किया होगा तो वो बच्चे क्या करेंगे वो तो ये वो ही बात सीखी है ना तो इसके लिए जवाबदार हम लोग रहेंगे ऐसा मुझे लगा आपका उस पर मैं विचार सुनना चाहती हूँ ये विचार काफी ये विषय काफी जटिल है इसका सीधा सीधा जवाब देना असंभव है आप ही के जो उदाहरण है उसी में अगर बात करें तो बच्चे जो हैं उन्होंने जो जो देखा वही वो करेंगे लेकिन माता पिता ने कभी दारू नहीं पिया था कभी सिगरेट नहीं की थी तो बच्चे कहां से सीख लिए जी ये तो वो ऐसे नहीं है कि जो केवल वो बच्चों का और हम लोगों का एक मार्ग निकालना अपने दायित्व से पलायन करने का ये बहुत सरल रास्ता है निश्चित रूप से अगर माता पिता ने बच्चों में बच्चों में उस समय में यह संस्कार नहीं डाला हो तो निश्चित रूप से बहुत त्रुटि होती है बहुत नुकसान होता है लेकिन ये नहीं बच्चे बोल सकते हैं कि आप लोगों ने ऐसे किया तो हम भी ऐसे करेंगे ना वो पूरी तरह से सही भी नहीं है हाँ जो बहुत महत्वपूर्ण चीज है कि बच्चों में वो संस्कार होना आवश्यक है बच्चों में जीवन पद्धति का संस्कार लाना जरूरी है और वो कार्य परिवार में होना जरूरी है परिवार के साथ में जो समाज है उसमें होना जरूरी है पुराने जमाने में हमारी जी जो समाज की रचना थी वो इस प्रकार की थी अब वो नहीं रहा तो अब हमको वो संस्कार बच्चों में देने के लिए अलग अलग रास्ते खोजने पड़ते हैं उसका नया रास्ता खोजना पड़ेगा और इसके ऊपर बहुत विचार करने की आवश्यकता है तो इसका सीधा जवाब तो नहीं दे सकते हैं लेकिन हाँ निश्चित रूप से अगर हम बच्चों में ये संस्कार देते हैं तो उम्मीद रख सकते हैं कि वो संस्कार फलीभूत होगा और लोग ख्याल करेंगे और नहीं करते हैं तो नहीं तो वो दोनों तरफ से चलता है बच्चों में हम लोगों को बुद्धि और ये देना तो है लेकिन बच्चे जब बड़े होते हैं तब उनको इसके बारे में अपने से विचार भी करना जरूरी है तो ये एक समाज का सवाल है वो केवल व्यक्ति अभी नहीं छोड़ उसको उसमें सुझाव या सुलझाना मुश्किल रहता है लेकिन जो हम कर सकते हैं उस पर हम लोगों को ख्याल करना है जब हम अपने तरफ से काम करना शुरू करेंगे धीरे 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 वो बढ़ते जाए सो वेल बिहेविंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ चिल्ड्रन वी शुड बी वेरी केयरफुल इज इट सो यस वी हैव टू थिंक थिंक वाइस we have to uh, know what are the consequences yeah because they will carry that impression in the subconscious and unconscious mind exactly. it will make a difference so yes we need to keep that in mind no Thank doubt no matter
so with this let us conclude our session it has been very wonderful neela ji archana ji to have come here and shared your experience your knowledge your insights so that we can bring ourselves to a more fruitful way of living so that we can be happy we can be healthy and we can feel contented fulfilled enriched that is the aim of yoga to allow mm. person to lead a fulfilled enriched happy life that has also been the teachings of gurudev and as we conclude the first satyam yoga conclave dedicated to gurudev swami satyanand ji let us take these learnings with us and try to implement them to whichever degree in our life that will be the dedication to the masters because that is all they expect that we implement the teachings in our life and improve the quality of our lives hari om tat sat hari om tat sat jai please sit in any comfortable meditative posture getting ready for shanti part hands on your knees in gnana archana mudra head neck shoulders back in a straight line eyes and mouth gently closed become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes awareness of your head neck shoulders back hands legs the whole body and now shift your awareness to your eyebrow center brumadhya visualize the form of a jyoti and maintaining your awareness on this we shall chant the mantra om three times together taking in a deep breath om om असतो मद्गम तमसो मोतिर्गम मृत्योर्मा अमृत गमय स्वस्तिर्ण मंगल लोका समस्ता सुखिनो भवन्तु ओम त्र्यंबक यजामहे सुगंधि पुष्टिवर्धन उर्वाक बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता ओं शाति 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 हैंड्स इन प्रणाम मुद्रा माता च पिता बंधुश्च सखा विद्याद्रविण मम देव मम देव 
मम देव देव हरि ओ हरिओं तत्सत जंटी रद्य पाम से गेंद सी चदा लेते मन फ्लोर टाइस experience the warmth radiating from your palms to your eyes energizing the eyes energizing the brain energizing the whole body and then gently move the palms away open your eyes hari om sat and namo narayan swami ji namo narayan so with this we come to the conclusion of the first satyam yog conclave dedicated to the teachings and life of gurudev and we will have 11 more such conclaves looking at the different aspects of yoga as taught by swami ji so that we can learn and try to implement that in our lives till then namo narayan namo narayan swami ji om tat sat namo narayan अच्छा